Section 3.2, the product and quotient rules. If f and g are both differentiable, then the derivative of their product is the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. So you might be asking yourself, okay, well, why didn't you just say that the uh, derivative of the product is the product of the derivatives? After all, the uh, uh, limit of a product is the uh, product of the limits, but if you let let's say x equal uh, one function and x squared be another function, then the derivative of x is one, derivative of two x is two. So you would expect the derivative of the product to be uh, two x in that case. But if you actually multiply these two guys, then you get x cubed. So we know that the derivative should be three x squared. So that's a little bit of a problem. The derivatives do not match up, so we have to have a more complicated product rule. So let's uh, take a look at this proof really quick. By the uh, definition of the derivative, the derivative of a product is the limit of f of x plus h times g of x plus h, you just plug in x plus h, minus f of x times g of x over h as h goes to zero. Then what we can do is this little clever trick where we uh, subtract f of x plus h times g of x and add f of x plus h times g of x. It's the same thing as uh, adding zero. So then we can group th together this stuff on the left and that becomes this. And we can group together these terms on the right and that becomes this with the limit because the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. Okay, so then we can factor out f of x plus h because it's in both. So that comes out. And we can factor out g of x because it's in both. So that comes out. And we can say that the limit of the product is the product of the limits. So we separate those two out. But then the limit of f of x plus h as h goes to zero means you can just plug in zero for h and get f of x. This limit is just the derivative of g. And similarly, the limit of g of x is g and the last limit is the derivative of f of x. Okay, so let's uh, do an example. If f of x equals x e to the x, let's find f prime of x. So f prime of x is equal to the derivative of x e to the x by the product rule, that's the first function, times the derivative of the second, so that's e to the x, plus the second function, e to the x, times derivative of the first, which is just x. Okay, so that means that we got x, derivative of e to the x is still e to the x, stays, and uh, e to the x is still e to the x, and derivative of x is 1. So that means this is x e to the x plus e to the x. There is e to the x in both, so we could factor that out and get its e to the x times x plus 1. In other words, x plus 1 times e to the x. Let's see if we could find the nth derivative of this function now. Let's do a second derivative to see if there's a pattern. So f double prime is the derivative of x plus 1 times e to the x. Okay, so by the product rule, that's x plus 1 times the derivative of e to the x plus e to the x times the derivative of x plus 1. Okay, so that's x plus 1 times e to the x plus e to the x times 1. So then we have uh, e to the x in both, so we could factor that out. We get it's e to the x times x plus 1 plus 1. So that's x plus 2 times e to the x. Similarly, if we take the third derivative, f triple prime, 
we get x plus 3 times e to the x. If we take the fourth derivative, we get x plus 4 times e to the x. So it looks like that the uh, nth derivative should be x plus n times e to the x. And we should really prove this with uh, induction, but uh, I think we'll just be lazy in this case. Let's differentiate the function f of t equals square root of t times a plus b of t. So because this is a function of t, we're going to assume that a and b are both constants. So they could be like 2 or 3 or, you know, any uh, numbers we want, square root of 2 or square root of 3, pi, but some sort of constant, not a uh, variable. We're just going to use a variable for these constants so that we can come up with some kind of uh, derivative formula for any possible values of a and b. For some reason, we typically use um, letters at the beginning of the alphabet for um, constants like a and b, and we use letters at the end of the alphabet like x, y, and z for actual variables. So let's look at f prime of t by the product rule, that's square root of t times the derivative of a plus b t plus a plus b t times the derivative of square root of t. Okay, so that's square root of t. The derivative of a plus b t, that's like if it was 2 plus 3 t, then derivative of 2 would be 0, so derivative of a is 0. And b t, if it was like 3 t, the derivative would just be 3, so this is just has a derivative of b. And then that's plus a plus b t times, well, square root of t is the same as t to the half, so the derivative is half t to the minus half. So that equals uh, b times square root of t plus a plus b t over 2 rad t, which simplifies out to a plus 3 b t when you find your common denominator over 2 rad t. Uh, we didn't have to use the product rule though. We could have just distributed the square root of t. So here's an alternative way of solving this problem. We could have written f of t as a rad t plus bt rad t by multiplying everything by square root of t inside the parentheses. And then we can get rid of the radicals by writing this as a times t to the one half power plus b times t to the three halves power because t to the one times t to the half is t to the three halves. Then we could take the derivative just using the power rule. So that becomes half a t to the minus one half plus three over two b t to the half, which is the same thing as a over two rad t plus three b rad t over two. When you find the common denominator of 2 rad t, you get the exact same thing as we got before. So sometimes it is possible to avoid using the product rule if you don't like it, but uh, oftentimes it is the easiest way to differentiate a function. Okay, if f of x is the square root of x times g of x, where g of 4 is 2 and g prime of 4 is 3, let's find f prime of 4. So f prime of x is going to be the derivative of square root of x times g of x, which is square root of x times the derivative of g of x. plus g of x 
times the derivative of square root of x. So that's square root of x times g prime of x plus g of x times half x to the minus 1 half. So that's square root of x times g prime of x plus g of x over 2 rad x. So then we wanted to know what f prime of 4 was. So f prime of 4 is equal to the square root of 4 times g prime of 4 plus g of 4 divided by 2 rad 4. So it's a good thing they told us what g of 4 and g prime of 4 are. That'll be square root of 4 is 2. g prime of 4 they told us was 3. And then g of 4 they told us was 2. And that's over 2 times 2. So that equals 6.5. Okay, next up we have the quotient rule. If f and d are differentiable, then the derivative of the quotient is g of x times derivative of f minus f times derivative of g. But we have to also divide by g of x squared. So a shorthand way of writing these rules might be uh, for the product rule. We could write, let's go back to that for a second. We could write it as f times g prime plus g times f prime. And that's f g prime. We could even change the order if we wanted to make it like f prime g, put the second one first, plus f g prime. So it shows you're taking derivative of f times g plus f times derivative of g, and then it becomes very similar to the quotient rule, where we take, again, derivative of f, that's this guy, times g minus f times derivative of g. So it's the same as product rule except for a minus. And we can't forget to divide by g of x squared. That's the derivative of f over g. So the proof is pretty much the same as the product rule, except that that term that we added subtracted this guy. You have to just modify slightly. You just change it to uh, adding and subtracting uh, f of x, g of x, and then the exact same thing goes through and you get the uh, quotient rule. It just becomes a little messy because of that denominator where you have g squared. Okay, so let y equal x squared plus x minus 2 over x cubed plus 6. Let's find y prime. So y prime equals x cubed plus 6 times the derivative of x squared plus x minus 2 minus x squared plus x minus 2 times the derivative of x cubed plus 6. We had to be less careful when, we, when using the product rule than when we use the quotient rule because the order matters due to subtraction, but with the product rule, we're taking the derivative of each one anyway, so it doesn't matter which one you do first. Over here, you must take the derivative of the numerator first. And we cannot forget to divide by the denominator squared without the derivative. Okay, so then this ends up becoming x cubed plus 6 times 2x plus 1 by the power rule x squared plus x minus 2 times 3x squared and still divided by x cubed plus 6 squared. So then that becomes 2x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 12x 
plus 6 when we FOIL. And the other term becomes 3x to the 4th plus 3x to the 3rd minus 6x squared. Okay, so we do some subtraction and we get minus x to the fourth minus, oops, 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 6 all over x cubed plus 6 squared. Let's find an equation of the tangent line to the curve y equals e to the x over 1 plus x squared at the point 1 half e. So we want an uh, equation of the tangent line. We need the slope of the tangent line, which is the derivative dy dx. So by the quotient rule, that's 1 plus x squared times the derivative of e to the x minus e to the x times the derivative of 1 plus x squared all over 1 plus x squared squared. Okay, so we take the derivative, we get 1 plus x squared times e to the x minus e to the x times 2x all over 1 plus x squared squared. So then that becomes e to the x times 1 minus 2x plus x squared over 1 plus x squared squared, which equals e to the x times 1 minus x squared over 1 plus x squared squared, which is about the best you're going to do. So we want the uh, slope of the tangent line at the point 1, or point 1 half e, so we're looking for x to be equal to 1. So this is at, so we're going to take dy dx evaluated at x equals 1. If you plug in 1, then the numerator becomes 0. The denominator does not become 0, so the derivative is 0 divided by some non-zero number, which is 0. So that means that the slope of the tangent line is zero. The slope of a line being zero implies that the line is horizontal. So the line is a horizontal line that's a y equals line with uh, arbitrary x values but constant y value. So whatever the y value is at the point, it's going to be along the entire line. So y is equal to half e. You could see this from the graph if we do a rough graph. Let's see, we have, looks something like that, where um, this is the point 1 half e, roughly, on the graph of y equals e to the x over 1 plus x squared. So then if we look at the tangent line, it's horizontal.